Hey there, so my name is Jorge Peruzio. I'm here to teach you again about programming smart contracts with VS Code and IBM Blockchain Extension. So in my last video, I talked a little bit about how to connect this, um, how to connect to your actual local fabric. So if you go into your extensions here, um, you'll have this local fabric, and then I showed you how to instantiate a smart contract. So we instantiated this Hello World smart contract, and we had two functions with it. Um, so if we remember, we can go back into here. These are the two functions we called. And the last thing we did is we updated the ledger with this a new argument text. And again, I showed you that after we create that smart contract, we package it, we install it and instantiate it on the network. And the first thing we have to do is to make sure all of these ports uh, match up. And that's kind of what we did in that first video is to match up all these ports uh, to fix our YAML file, and then we're able to invoke the smart contract um, by uh, providing the right channel, the right contract name, and then submitting a transaction. Okay, so in the second part of the video today, I want to talk to you about upgrading the smart contract, so changing some of the um, ch changing some of the functions here, and then upgrading it, and then actually querying the ledger. So let's go ahead and do that. So first things first, um, we're gonna copy and paste some code. So in my GitHub repo, which I'll post in the description, there's also a tutorial on, on developer.ibm.com. Um, on step 11 here, uh, we'll have the code to upgrade the smart contract with, so just copy and paste it. Um, and then now we can go ahead and use Shift Control P to actually um, um, package this contract. And we'll say, go ahead and package the Hello World contract. Oh, and then it says something like package with that name and version already exists. So again, we made a little mistake here. We need to upgrade this uh, version number. So if you get that this error here, that's what you have to do here. So again, let's try that again now. Uh, package a uh, smart contract, and now this should work. Um, we package to install actually in here. So we'll go into my channel. We'll go into the peers, uh, peer zero, and we'll go and say install smart contract, and then we put in this hello world contract two. So we successfully installed that on the peer. Next, we want to instantiate that. Um, so if we actually go here and right click on this instantiated contract, it'll give us the option to upgrade it. So we'll click on, click on upgrade, and then we'll click on uh, version 0.0.2, .0 and then we'll just call instantiate again. And we'll pass it no argument, so just hit enter. And then in a few moments, we should see that our smart contract is upgraded. Okay, so we see here in our notification that our smart contract has successfully been upgraded. So that's good, and that was because we upgraded this version number here in the package.json. And now, if we look into my contract, we have a few other functions that we could call. Um, so we'll go ahead and call this add member function. Um, so we'll go into go into invoke, and in, in this um, co contract.submit transaction, we need to actually call the add member. Um, so I have. Um, a, uh, this already written out in the instructions. So we'll go ahead and just copy and paste this for simplicity. Um, so here we see that we're calling add member. We're passing in Ginny at ibm.com for the email. We're passing in the name here and the address and then the phone number. I just made this up. Um, so we can go ahead and save this. And in our terminal here, we can do node invoke. Okay, perfect. So we see that it worked. Um, we see that the response is returned to us, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, now let's go ahead and do one more, and we'll um, um, pass in a different member now. So I'm just copying and pasting it from the uh, tutorial um, just for simplicity. So again, you can see here I'm adding another member. Uh, this time it's arvind at ibm.com. That's the key. And then the, um, the object contains his, Arvin's name, uh, the address, and then the phone number for simplicity. You can see that's not a real phone number, um, but let's go ahead and invoke it. Awesome, so you see that we uh, added this, um, this object onto the ledger, and now I want to show you some of the query functionality. So we've added two objects. Um, now, in our uh, query.js, so in this file here that's included with the VS Code Local Network GitHub. So again, if you don't have this file, just go ahead and git clone this uh, VS Code Local Network uh, GitHub repo that will be posted in the description. And you see here in our query.js file, it looks very similar to our invoke.js. We have the same imports at the top. We still are using our uh, wallet for the identity aspect of the blockchain. And of course, we're using this user one identity and we're passing in this um, 
our connection options, and then our connection profile, which is actually just our um, network.yaml file, as you can see here. Again, we're getting our network, and then the real, um, the real f uh, core of this logic comes from this line, where we actually pass in the um, which chain code ID we want, which should actually be changed to hello uh, world contract. Um, and then the, the function is query, and then the argument um, is either Ginny or Arvin, or actually let's go ahead and uh, just check our greeting. So let's see what's on the ledger. Okay, so we see that instantiate was called. So when you remember, um, the first thing we do when we upgrade a contract is we call instantiate. So that's why our um, when we do node query, we see that it says something like instantiate was called. Um, and then now let's go ahead and check for uh, Ginny at IBM.com. We should get, if we query this, we should get that full response back. Okay, perfect. So we do get that response back. And then lastly, we can check for Arvind. And then we can query that. Uh, great. And we see that um, we have Arvin's response returned back to us. So the good thing about queries is it doesn't actually add a block to the ledger, so you're not actually uh, creating more data, you're just getting some of that data back, and that's gonna be a really useful thing um, in the future. So I hope this tutorial was useful. Um, go ahead and find all of the other links and code in, in the description, and please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Horia Proots you out.